Hello, seventh grade scientists. Welcome to your first seventh grade science flipped video. Uh, the purpose of this video is going to be to get you used to the mechanics of a light microscope. You're going to be using a microscope tomorrow um, to view the letter E from the newspaper and then the day after that you're going to be looking at some yeast cells under the microscope. Today this video is just for you to get an idea of how the microscope works, how to use it, what knobs to turn. That way you can come in tomorrow and get right to work and know what you're doing. Alright, in case you don't already have it out, it's a good idea to have the getting familiar with the microscope handout that was given to you in class today. This handout has a uh, model micros microscope on it with some of the parts labeled. Uh, this one's not going to look exactly like the microscope you're going to use, but it's a pretty good uh, model for it. Uh, below that also has some of the magnification uh, equations to, show, to let you know exactly how much magnification your microscope has. All right, so here's our microscope. Everyone in seventh grade science has the chance to use microscopes just like this. Um, they're pretty good microscopes. They have a lot of magnification and they're very easy to use. Uh, the first thing that we're going to take a look at are the eyepieces. These are up here. And these microscopes are good. They have two of them. So you can actually work with a partner and both view um, a sample. You have one eyepiece here and then there is another one here. Um, just be aware, the view will be different depending on what eyepiece you look at. And in fact, one of the eyepieces has a arrow in it um, that you can use to help point to things. Um, the other eyepiece does not have that. So if you're trying to communicate with the person that you're working at a microscope with and you say, oh, it's right near the arrow, uh, the other person's not going to know what you're talking about. So just be aware of that. Uh, moving on to some other parts of the microscope, this here is what we call the arm. And if you have to lift up your microscope or carry it in any way, make sure you grab this part. It's very sturdy. Um, it provides a nice way to pick it up. Don't pick it up from here. Um, don't try to just pick it up from underneath. Make sure you have one hand on the arm and then another, uh, the other arm can be used to support the bottom of your scope. All right, so we're going to zoom in a little bit and take a look at what's called the stage of the microscope. And that's this thing. Um, just like in a play, um, where all the actors are on the stage. The stage is where the action sort of happens for your microscope. And it's on this place that you're going to be putting your microscope slide. All right, so once you're ready to actually use your microscope, you're going to need to have your microscope slide. I don't have anything on this one, but that's okay. I'm just showing you how to put it on. And what you're going to want to do is put your microscope slide on. This might be a little hard for me to do one-handed. But you're going to pull this little metal arm out to the side and put your slide in. Put it right against this metal arm. Then very carefully use your finger to make the swivel arm go against your slide. Don't just let it go. Um, if you let it go it's gonna come flying back and it's gonna um, end up breaking part of the microscope slide. You don't want to do that. Once it's on there it's nice and secure. And you're gonna see that we have these two wheels here. These are our stage controls, and part of what you're going to do tomorrow is to notice what these wheels do, but you can get a little idea right now. As I turn these wheels, my microscope slide is going to move left and right, and forwards and backwards. And that's very important because you want to make sure that what you want to look at is right over this opening. This is a light microscope, and so when I turn it on, you're going to see that light comes on, and the light travels through this opening, illuminating the sample that you want to see, that you want to magnify. So it's very important that your sample is right over that opening. So you're going to use these stage controls to move your slide around to try to view what you're trying to look at. So once you have everything in place, now you're ready to start looking at the sample through your eyepieces. But the first and probably the most important thing is to make sure that your lenses are correct. And so the first part of this is looking at what we call the objective lenses. And that is, those are these lenses. And you're going to see that our microscopes have three of them. There's the red one. There's yellow. And there's the blue one. 
The red one is our lowest power. You're going to see there's a number on there four times. That means this lens magnifies the object four times. It's going to be four times bigger than in real life. Our yellow lens, yep, you see it, 10x. That means this lens magnifies our object ten times. It will appear ten times bigger. And then our blue lens, you can just see it there, 40x. This is the big, this is the big one here. This is the powerful lens, 40 times bigger. So any object, when you're viewing the blue lens, it's going to look 40 times bigger than in real life. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what about these eyepieces? Are they lenses too? Well, you're correct. If you notice, you're going to see 10x on there. These eyepiece lenses magnify 10 times. We're going to come back to this thought a little bit later about how much this is actually being magnified. But you basically have two lenses on this microscope, a 10x and then the subjective lens, which you can change and get anywhere from four times bigger all the way up to 40 times bigger. We are always going to start on the red lens, the weak power. Um, it provides a very crisp image. It's going to look nice and clear. It's just not going to be magnified very uh, large. But this is where we start. It helps us get a nice image and figure out where it is that we want to look on our microscope slide. To, make, to get the lens in place, you really have to make sure that it's in and clicked into place. You can see right now it just kind of, I can swivel it very easily. Hear that click? That means the lens is in place and I can't move it quite as easy. So listen again if you missed it. That click is what you want to make sure you hear. That means the lens is in place. So now my objective lens is the 4x, which is the weak lens, and we're ready to view using our eyepiece and focus the image. So I can't put the camera into the lens, you're not going to see anything, but we can still go through what you're gonna, what's going to happen. So as you look through your eyepiece, the image that you see may be a little cloudy. You may not see anything at all. It may be totally fuzzy. That's because you need to uh, focus the lens on the image. And that's what these knobs are for. These are your focus knobs. These knobs are what you're going to turn in order to get the best possible image for each lens that you use. Now we always start on the red lens, and this is probably the most important rule for using a microscope. When we start on the red lens, we always use the large knob. This is what we call the coarse focus knob. It is the only knob that we use for the red lens. We will never use any other not, uh, lens with this knob. Red, the big knob. Red, the big knob. Most important thing for you to understand out of this video. What you will do is turn this knob, and you'll notice it goes both ways. And if you look really carefully, you'll even see what it does. It raises and lowers the stage. What you need to do is look through your microscope and turn it one way. If it doesn't look like it gets any clearer, turn it the other way. Once you have a nice clear image, you're done. Typically, we're going to ask you to make a nice detailed drawing of whatever it is that you see. Once you have a nice focused image, now you can move on to the higher magnifications. And we go in order. So if you remember, red was 4x, yellow is our 10x. So we'll turn that one. And again, make sure it clicks into place. If it's not clicked in, you're actually not going to see anything at all when you look through your eyepiece. When it's clicked in, you'll see something. So once our yellow lens is in place, we're going to have to refocus. And this is the thing that tricks up some people when they use the microscope. They think, well, it was focused before. Shouldn't it be focused now? That's not the case. Um, once you change the lens, you're going to have to refocus. But this time, we're not going to use this lens. Remember what I said before. This is only for the red lens. For the yellow and blue lenses, we're going to use this knob. This is the fine focus knob. And when I turn this, you're going to notice you can't see any movement on the stage. It moves it these tiny, tiny amounts. It's almost impossible to see it move on its own. But when you turn this, 
you're going to slowly get a better image. So again, you may need to turn one way, you may need to turn the other way. And these knobs can turn pretty far, but turn it one way or the other until you get a crisp image. <laughs> again, you'll probably, want to have, you'll probably have to make a drawing. Once that's done, you're going to be able to go on to the blue lens. Again, make sure it clicks into place. Now, the problem with the blue lens is that, yeah, it magnifies it really large and it's going to look uh, zoomed in, but the detail is going to be gone. Where the red lens gives you a lot of detail, but everything looks far away. The blue lens is zoomed in, but it's going to look a lot fuzzier. So it can be difficult to see, um, it can be difficult to find your samples and it can be difficult to get a clear image. Um, it takes a little bit of work with the fine focus knob to get a decent image. And even then, it may look dark um, or it may look a little bit fuzzy. You may not get a great picture with your blue lens, um, but that's okay. In many cases, you will be able to, and you can still make a nice drawing um, and some good observations about whatever specimens you're looking at. All right. uh, one important thing to note is to, when you turn this to the blue lens, do it very carefully. Sometimes the lens can actually hit the microscope slide and you don't want to force it if it's going to do that. That can actually move your microscope slide or connect, even damage the lens or the microscope slide. So just be careful of that. Don't go spinning it fast. Um, when you're at the yellow lens and you're ready to go to blue, turn it slow. Take a peek. Does it look like it's going to hit? No, this is going to be okay. And I can put it right in. No problem. Um, some of your microscopes are going to have a wheel down here. Uh, it's called the disc diaphragm. Um, some of them don't have it. Uh, you're welcome to spin this. This one doesn't happen to have one. But you can spin this diaphragm and it lets different amounts of light in. It's not going to make much of a difference for what we do. But you're welcome to try it. Alright, so one last thing before we leave. Uh, let's take a look one more time at the magnification amounts. Um, this is a real simple math equation that you can use to figure out um, exactly how much magnification you're getting from your microscope. So if you remember, the eyepiece is 10x. That means it magnifies 10 times. On the paper that I gave you today, uh, fill in that number. Put a 10 for your eyepiece magnification. Now, the low power objective lens, that's our red one, it's 4x. It magnifies four times. So let's put a four there. So when you have two lenses like these compound light microscopes have, you have your 10x and our 4x, you don't add the magnification. It's not going to be 14 times bigger. It's multiplied. And so you get a lot more magnification by adding lenses. So in this first example, if our eyepiece is 10x, and our low power objective lens is 4x, our total magnification is simply 10 times 4, which is 40x. So when you're looking at a sample with the red lens, the objects are going to look 40 times bigger than they actually are. So for homework, what you need to do, other than watching this video, which you're already doing, um, is complete the rest of the sheet. You have your medium power objective and your high power objective. Those are your yellow and blue lenses. Your eyepiece magnification is always the same. It's always 10. Using, use the video to fill out the rest. You should be able to do that simple calculation and get the total magnification for the other two lenses. Um, the bottom then just asks you, write out a rule or some sort of equation for determining the total magnification of a compound light microscope. Um, basically just use words to describe what we did up here. Okay? And that's it. So after watching this video, you should know how to operate the compound light microscopes that we're going to use. You're going to be using them tomorrow, so watch it again if you need to. Um, you'll be expected to uh, jump right in and use the microscopes and get some nice clear images of the letter E from the newspaper and some yeast cells. Alright, that's it for now. See you in class.